Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we talk to Jason Bronner about Bourbon's Bistro being named Bar of the Year by Whiskey Magazine's Icons of Whiskey Awards. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Lenny Eckstein and Jason Bronner. Hey, gang, what's up? Howdy. Hey, hey. hey. What's happening? Hell, yeah, yeah. We're going to be talking a little bit about this award and what it means to Jason and find out uh, what, what, how this works and what it entails and, and how excited he is. But we'll get to that after the break. For right now, Jason said there's something he wanted to talk about beyond that topic. What is it, Jason? Well, you know, uh, there was some previous conversation about some stitches. And, you know, as a kid, I, I seemed like I was getting stitches all the time. So... I was wondering if anybody has had stitches and then what about a count, like a t- total count for up to this, up to your day today, how many stitches had okay. anybody have or hmm. had or, or, and there's, is there an incident around it? Obviously there is. So yes. um, that, that was my curiosity. I would say I have two stitches incidents with about 90 total stitches. I would say I had 10 on my face, 90 total stitches, 10 on my face. uh, And uh, that, that was, I got bit by a dog when I was three. And uh, yeah, so that's right here. I'm looking at the side of my cheek, but it's covered by the beard now, but yeah, yeah, it's still noticeable, still noticeable uh, to this day if I don't have the beard. And then, uh, and then my knee, when I crashed through the, uh, um, well, through the ceiling uh, of my house uh, up in the attic and uh, crashed through and actually ceiling went through incident. Yeah, the ceiling incident where I crashed through a fish tank, which was on a shelf above, uh, <laughs> which was well-placed uh, <laughs> fish tank. No fish in it. Almost though. died. No, no fish were harmed. We were saving that for something. We never, decided we'd never have fish again, but then for some reason you saved the fish tank though, right? Uh, I have no idea why. Not a good one. Just throw the damn fish tank away. So yeah, I crashed <laughs> through there. And uh, yeah, that was a bad one. That, that involved internal and external stitches and uh damn near killed myself but uh, that's a 80 stitches 80 stitches on that one yeah yeah that one that one was that's uh, a lot of blood that that was a lot yes you almost uh, died i saw my that would have been the most steve akeley way to die i crashed <laughs> through a ceiling onto yes. a book <laughs> now what were you doing a in the attic? And died. i was organizing it so only part of it has the plywood down and for some reason i wanted to get all the way to the, in a in a moment of absolute stupidity i wanted to of course get organized as possible so i thought i'm going to take this stuff all the way to the edge and uh, of course we're taking it to the edge i just wanted to step off off the edge so i could get all the, the stuff piled up to the edge and boom it's a, it's a one second mistake and then you realize immediately that no but then it's too late and then crash and then and then blood and they, yes yeah so that uh and then that got sewed up internal ones dissolved so it got uh, internal ones dissolved the external ones were done with uh i would say similar to fishing line i mean uh, maybe it's the exa- exact same thing but uh then they have to cut all those out there and it's a long process because there's a lot of them and yeah. then they miss some and uh and they get infected and you know you just pull those out yourself later and uh, you know it's like it was like a, a pimple almost it feels like it but it feels like there's something in there and then you pop it and then shoots out of there this plastic suture 
uh, which is nasty, nasty. So that's that was uh, dealing with that for a little while because yeah, that was my my whole leg was effed up on that thing. So yeah. Jesus, now what? Now when did this happen? That Grown the, ass man. Uh, yeah, I was that was 2012. So yes, holy uh, shit, May of that's 2012. I crashed the ceiling. Yeah. Damn, well, it feels like just an instant ago, actually. But yes, so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, that was that was the, that was the bad one. Uh, how about uh, how about you, what, what, Lenny? What, how many stitches have you had? Uh, how many incidents? Uh, and how many total stitches? Let, I, can give you I don't know if I can go with the number of stitches, but uh, starting from the first one, uh, fell off skateboard on some glass. That was great. Um, still have a little scar on my hand from that. A uh, little older. Now I was laying in the back of my first car, cutting carpet for the trunk. I don't know why I was cutting carpet for the trunk, but I was in the trunk with a carpet knife. <laughs> And uh, I missed and cut my leg. So a few stitches there. And uh, and then a few years later, uh, I was surfing in my, well, I got hit in the head with a surfboard is a short story. And uh, I had to get the back of my head stitched up, still have that scar. And then the boring ones are just like surgeries, you know, like stitches in my knees. Uh, uh, recent vasectomy stitches, you know, oh, those oh, are the worst. God. Oh, great information. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Now we ever. all know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, huh. Yeah. Um, that's about it. I, I try not to uh, go to the ER. If I if I look at it and I think like I can cover it with a band aid, certainly it'll heal eventually. Yeah. Right. All right. blood, all, all bleeding stops is what my doctor friend likes to tell me. Yeah. You me. either die or right. it stops. Yeah. yeah. And it all, stops, but at die, some point so yeah. it stops. So yes, yeah, so that's that's eventually all we know. It stops somehow. Yeah. All right, Becca. How about you? Number of incidents, total. St- what, what's your? What do you think your stitch count is? Just give us a, a uh, ballpark here, Lenny. Lenny I mean, first. Uh, he didn't. He didn't say. Yeah. What? A stitch count. Twenty. Okay, we're gonna we'll go with four. Okay, all right, four for Lenny. Um, I definitely didn't have ninety stitches. I don't. Know, I probably had like I don't know, maybe like twenty or something. I don't really know how many I had. I guess, but uh, my face incident of falling into. Yet another corner. I've fallen into uh, three or four corners uh, in my drunk life. Um, this one was the worst one because um, it almost took my eye out. So that was, I mean, almost every time you fall into a corner with your eye, you almost lose your eye. But this one was the worst one because it cut open my eye uh, all the way down here. Um, uh, don't drink too much tequila. Is the yeah, That's the takeaway on that one. Yeah. Is uh, limit your tequila intake. Um, <laughs> it's a professional warning. We're gonna we'll release that warning. We're just gonna limit our, our, our tequila, tequila intake. You know, it's, it's yeah. a, it's yeah. a, you know yeah. for safety reasons, um, because you might fall into a corner and almost uh, you know take your eyeball out. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the stitches thing where like they start because I had a bunch of internal stitches. They also the worst thing about it was since it was so close to my eyeball. Um, they were worried I had ripped open my tear duct. And so, um, and I was drunk when they were doing this. Thank God, honestly. Um, and they'd give me morphine too. Um, I think it was morphine. It was morphine or they gave me fentanyl or something like that in the hospital, which I said I did not really want because I'm like, I don't want that stuff. Um, which was even funnier because when I said, I don't really want the pain medication, I heard them going, she may be a possible drug addict because she's refusing these drugs. And I'm like, no, I just don't want the, like, I don't want those because it just like, I don't freak want out that. when you don't want the drugs they're trying yeah. to give you. Yeah. yeah they're like, like, they're freaking They're like, well, she might be a possible drug. I'm like, I'm not a fucking drug addict. I just don't like want fentanyl because like all I hear about is people dying from fentanyl. So that kind of freaks me out. Okay. Like that's like freaky um so one day were they had a doctor come in and he was pushing a stint through my tear ducts yes and yeah. that as it happens yeah sure is horrendous it is absolutely because it's i mean it's a tiny it's a, it's a tiny duct and they were just like sticking this little wire through it like it pretty much like a fishing line like through it to make sure it was all intact yeah. And I can still just remember that feeling going through my eye and I'm like trying to like hold it together. And the doctor was being very, very nice. And he's like, you're, you're handling this really well. And I'm like, this is absolutely the worst thing I've ever felt in my life was I'm just putting this yeah. wire through my tear duct. But mm-hmm. they, when they stitched me up, it definitely wasn't a plastic surgeon that stitched me up. They, uh, it was, <laughs> I nice. might as well got, might as well got stitched up in my kitchen. <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We 
<laughs> we know someone who could do that. So, okay. Uh, Jason, how about you? You asked the question. Uh, how yeah, many, you know, how many, it's well, hard. Rebecca, how many total stitches do we assume here? If we're taking I guess like, I'd guess 15 or 20. Okay, I'm leading. I'm leading right now. Go ahead. Oh, you're definitely Jason. leading, yeah. Ahead, it's Jason. hard to say how many. I'm, it's, it's probably under 100, Steve. So, you, I think you still probably got me there. Oh, but damn. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a kid, five or six in the knee, the other leg got cut. There's eight there. I had a bicycle accident. I had 15 in my chin. So you got <laughs> five, 10 in 15, and five yeah, outside yeah. or vice versa, You're whatever that off. was. Yeah. And then, you know, I've had um, hernia surgery. So there was yeah. just a couple there. I had that. They just glued me, though. I had a hernia and surgery. Gall bladder. Just, no, not oh. gall. What's the other thing? Appendix. Appendix, Appendix yeah. came out. That one came out. And then I had a bunch of internal... I had a surgery where they had to actually, so I just did the one surgery, this rhinoplasty and all that, and it went. Of course, south. you got your no job. That's how you got your good looks. Yeah, right. See, it's kind of Roman esque there. Um, <laughs> but then that, so my nose started bleeding just randomly. You know, I lost about, uh, I guess, a third of my blood through my oh, nose and through mouth. your nose. Oh, it was unbelievable. So eventually, that went on for years, and they finally had to go in through my femoral artery. And and put some cement back there. They put me under, uh, you know, I was on the table for whatever, x-ray. And Christmas Day, I looked like a, a newborn baby. I'd lost a big patch of hair back here. <laughs> but I, who knows how many stitches I got. But um, Damn. Yeah. it was, um, I kind of vow never to do that stuff again. <laughs> Especially the kind of the stupid shit where you jump off stuff and fall into stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but I just thought, you know, there, there's when people get stitches, there's definitely some some stories around it. So there's definitely I stories. That, yeah. that was a pretty good uh, lead in there. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, it is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with uh, Miss Becca Sue. Miss Becca Sue, what do you got there? Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> the, perfect. Just kidding. I've got it's a sewing kit. How the fuck do I open this? I've got Knob Creek. That's a barrel pick. Oh, I got it. I'm getting it. Why do they put these on so hard? Yeah. Oh my God. Messes, the wax messes it up. Like, geez, yeah. like if I was just a nice old man that wanted some Knob Creek, I'd never get that thing open. All right. So I've got some Knob Creek here, single barrel. Well, let's hold it back a little bit. <laughs> well, th that's the plastic. Okay. Okay. The cork was decent. Yeah, the cork broke apart, so it's now just the. Just it wasn't the cork. cork. That was just the plastic. Oh, that was the plastic. Well, oh, so you were okay. Right. That, the I, actual cork. That was actually. I thought it was top. the top part, part of the cork. Okay. So no, that, that was, was the plastic still, or the, the oh, wax. Okay. All right, Lenny. What do you got? Um, since I lost the stitches competition, I'm going to try to win the cork pop. I've got a, a new bottle of Booker's. Ooh, Ooh nice. You. Fancy. Okay, well, that's our lead. It was the look at him. Fuck yeah. Look at look how proud. Fuck yeah. He's so, he's so happy. <laughs> I'm gonna go right after him. I've got uh, some barrel strength uh, Penelope here. Barrel strength Penelope. Let's see what we got. Ah, uh, Lenny. I'd say Lenny still got the lead. So I I, so. I I did not surpass him. So Jason's between you and Lenny. What do you got? Yeah. So I don't know if anybody heard of this a door knocker. A door knocker. No. I, I got it in a raffle or something. 112 it says. Straight Kentucky bourbon. Really? Okay. Door knocker. Don't know anything about that one. Jeez, Never knocker. heard of it. All right, here we go. No. <laughs> what? You can't hear it. What? You just heard a slight so noise. Over here. Are you kidding me? Really loud. We. It looked like it must have been really. Your reaction looked like it was super loud, but we didn't that's hear a that. It's, that's the loudest cork pop I've ever done in my life. Really? Well, the, the microphone you got you there. You, Mike Muffle got you. You're a victim of Mike Muffle. So, uh, Who is Lenny, Mike Muffle? Y'all got to be quiet. Lenny wins. Lenny wins. Cheers. You heard it better that time. Cheers. Back All right. soon. Check that out. <laughs> Whoa, the old crow oh, glass. That. Yeah. That's a big glass. That's nice. It is. Yeah, well, it's our old crow rocks glass. It's That's cool. pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Tiny hands. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about these icons of Whiskey Awards, Jason's recent win, and we'll find out more about that. We'll do that in just a few.
Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We'll also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop. It's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Stave and Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the Society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. This is Danny Kennard, which is turning into Freddie Mills. Y'all have a good fucking day because <laughs> this is the Bourbon Daily. Thank you. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're talking about the icons of whiskey awards and Jason Bronner. Yes, we are. Now, the man himself should win one of these. I, I don't know what goes into an Icons of Whiskey Award, but Jason should definitely win one himself at some point. But right now, it's pretty cool to have the Bistro win, though, isn't it, Jason? It is. It, it really is. That is actually the second year in a row. I was like, I don't know how that happened either. Two so, years in a row. Wow. Um, wow. And it was a cool little event. Um, if you, I don't know, there's, there's some photos out there if you go to... The icons of whiskey they have a bunch of photos i think on their website from the uh from the night of it bunch of great people there uh steve nally was got uh, elected into the hall of fame that they have um peggy no stevens all kinds of people were there um uh i think not everybody from heaven hill connor was there all, all kinds it was great i mean there's yeah. tons of people i'm not mentioning but uh what a great time i was uh, I'm thrilled as, as usual to be in there just uh overwhelmed that uh that we we made it and uh, so i'm just happy and you know like like i always say it's i guess it's 18 years now to be be an overnight success <laughs> yeah yeah it's got to be rewarding though to to see this dream coming together and see the recognition i mean you have a vision you put this thing together and then to see people finally recognize the, the greatness that it is, it has to be pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, that's great. I mean, like I said, we even if we didn't get the award, which we haven't several times and you know, many years we've been open that, that we just keep doing what we're doing and and um and uh they're doing a great job over there. And even without me, you know, I've kind of stepped away a little bit. Um and they're doing a they're doing a bang up job over there. Probably it's running better than I'm not there all the time. It's probably running better than it ever had. <laughs> That's the secret sauce. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, Jason's not here as much. Get uh, rid of the boss and yeah. we'll do great. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, you know, like 
I, I would say for most of the industry awards things, like nine out of 10 of them, I'm usually like, eh, who cares, whatever. But uh, I, I do always enjoy the icons of whiskey stuff because like, uh, one, I think it's kind of a cool thing where somebody could nominate, um, you know, sometimes it's a brand ambassador or in this case, like, you know, a, a bourbon bar or an establishment. Um, I think that's cool. And I, it's, I don't know, I've always enjoyed like the discovery of who, who wins these. It's uh, a neat way to get wise to some cool spots. So I don't know, for anybody who doesn't know, you know, your place, Bronner, I think that that's, it's a cool, you know, aspect of just general discovery, but it is pretty badass recognition also. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, you know, like I said, it, we're, we're just tickled to death about it. And, yeah. and um, to do two years in a row, it was, uh, I was like, did anybody else, participate i don't know you know <laughs> uh, but but you know like i said we we're real happy and, and we, we were going to keep doing what we're doing and if we get some awards that's fine but if not that's fine too you know but uh yeah it's well well appreciated for sure from from whiskey you know such a such a great publication like whiskey magazine yeah yeah it, it has to be cool to win an award for what you guys are doing and and more geared towards whiskey at this point have you guys won some awards too based on the food because uh, there's different places that that really would judge you more on the food that you're serving there versus you know the whiskey bar and and you guys i always say you, when you're going you're, you're going to go there to have your best experience uh at a, at a bourbon bar when you go to louisville but you might damn near have your best uh food experience too you guys have such great food there so have you um, ever have you ever won something like that you know, we, uh, a lot of local stuff, you know, right. when we uh, do some fundraisers or whatever. I mean, we definitely have been voted uh, some best restaurants and different yeah, things cool. like that. Um, but, you know, I guess the big the big national stuff we just haven't participated in, whether it be uh, James Beard or something like that. We really uh, and I don't really know the process and um, Chef Jeremy we we want the best for him for sure. He he's doing a great job. He's, he's really good. Yeah, for a while, and uh, I don't know if he, you know, anytime he's ready for us to do that, surely we'd look into uh, trying to get him some recognition. But I think he he just um, is very content with being back in the kitchen and and uh, just doing what he does best. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I like I said, any any recognition we get. Um, from him he i mean he's a top-notch chef and and uh runs a tight kitchen it's probably the best kitchen uh i'm sure it's the best i mean we're we're really knock on wood we're hitting on all cylinders there uh with the with the front of the house staff the back of the house staff we just can't complain yeah, yeah. what do you think is the coolest recognition you ever got whether it's being listed on on a list as number one for something or or something local, uh, you know, an award that really means something to you or something like this that's kind of nationally recognized, uh, you know, uh, uh, icons of whiskey. What What is the coolest recognition that you ever got, you think? Uh, and again, it's your opinion. There's no right answer here. It's not like everybody else can say, well, yeah, of course it's this because it that's the biggest award you get. No, yeah. it's wh whatever you felt was the, the coolest thing that ever happened. You know, I think that, I guess when we first opened, because there wasn't a whole lot of bourbon bars, we, we, we did get awarded the bourbon bar of North America back then. Uh huh. And, and they had um, a little thing. It was either at the Brown hotel or as a seal box, uh, but they invited us and had a luncheon and, and uh, you know, there's this picture somewhere. I, I, I need to look it up. And I mean, like I'm talking, Jimmy Russell was there, Julian Van Winkle. I, I can't even say who all was there. And it was, you know, me and my business partner, John, and we're in this picture, like, you know, turds in a punch bowl or whatever, because, <laughs> you know, it, the, the picture comes turds out. And I, in said, a punch bowl. <laughs> I said, John, we're, we're with the five families. Of bourbon, you know, it's like, man, we, we're in the club. So that was the coolest thing feeling like that, you know, <laughs> we had graduated or, or had, we were in with the five families. And at that time there were only, you know, maybe 10 major distilleries when we first opened up. Yeah. So th there wasn't a big, you know, there wasn't a, a big group like there is now, but uh, so that was the, really the coolest thing to feel like we had just been accepted and, and, and made our bones. Let's put it that way. Yeah. The, the I, five uh, families making it sound the, like the five families. Well, so, yeah. well, sure. So I mean, yeah, if you see the picture, it's, it's cool. It's the bourbon mafia. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. 
I, I mean, I asked because uh, my company is up for an award. I can't talk about it yet because it's not been released. That it's uh, and we won't know for a little while. But uh, you know, we're new and on the scene, and we're up for this uh, prestigious award in St. Louis. This, is a, this isn't a national thing. No one, you know, no one will even know nationally. But for us, it'd be a huge deal, and it's exciting. So I want to ask Becca. You've been involved in the distillery business long enough now. What do you think is the coolest award? And and this could be. This this could predate you there, but you, you just know because you're at Neely Family every day. What do you think is the the coolest award Neely Family Distillery has ever won? I think I know, uh, but I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Uh, uh, you know. I mean, the the first gold that we got was really cool from San Francisco, uh -huh. um, but last year we got our first double gold in bourbon, which was just like I mean, it was. Yeah, your Super bourbon cool, distillery but, to get double gold in San Francisco. But, but also um, the accidental win of, well, not accidental because it won for its merit, but Royce not knowing that he was about to win down in New Orleans last year and he just went down randomly for, you know, like 36 hours. And then he won, uh, I think it was best barrel proof bourbon down there which was pretty funny yeah that's um, a, that was, that a was big, a, i mean he's carrying that that award around with him you know through uh, you the know. airport down bourbon street he just right. with his award that's a pretty head. cool that's a meaningful and, award you know that meant something to him the way he yeah carried that because um yeah. Oh, i think cool. connor was standing right next to him when he won and connor got second uh-huh yeah, <laughs> yeah what is i mean how does that feel You're and i think that, that made, like Royce, i think yeah. like like there's one thing like it's really cool to get yeah. you know um an award like from san francisco but they just like send you the results on an email and it's like oh we won cool and then eventually you get you know a, a little medal and stuff I'm like that's cool but like winning in person standing next to someone from one of the five families <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and beating them i think that for royce i think that that was like just a really big like i've really made it kind of moment like he already had made it at that point like he'd already you know been winning awards but i think that just like getting that in that moment was a really you, big deal to royce were you there the first year when he won his first ever award the uh, first time he yes, ever entered i've been here for awards. every award yeah yeah so even, funny enough, this, this in, you weren't even dating new orleans, or anything yeah you weren't dating in, or anything this yeah, is the funniest but, shit when we were in new orleans i'm right. you know fucking like just wasted like right. wandering around the bourbon festival um just trashed and they're walking around with their little like uh the parade like Royce up. Yeah, and then yeah. they're, at, they're in the parade and they're going and i was like where are you guys going and they're like we're going to find the neelys and i'm like you're going the wrong way you just passed the neelys they're down that way like yeah. we passed them i said yeah the neelys are back down that way so i turned parade the parade around, around yeah. and they went back you have been there for every award and even, then yeah even we before you two were thing yeah. Well, we start, actually we got engaged the day that he won his first gold medal at san francisco oh, you're you're his uh rabbit's foot yeah <laughs> exactly and then like he wasn't even gonna go to new orleans like i know he would have won anyways this last year with the barrel strength but he wasn't even gonna go and i said just fucking go like i'm gonna stay here like we need like i need to work but you we don't need you so just go and so he went down there and he won and he got to prance around with it and then you know i've picked out the barrels that we've sent in as of late to any of the you know all the spirits competitions like it's the ones that i've been picking out and like yes royce approves them but i go yeah i think this is the best and so like the usual suspect is what won last year and we got that first double gold which is one that i picked out yeah i just brought something up uh, lucky rabbit's foot when we were kids i'm talking to jason now uh, and maybe lenny to some degree those things were like everywhere rabbit's feet the dyed rabbit i you don't see them anymore maybe you mm. i'm sure the internet you i have still one find anything i know but back in the day that was like a huge i guess people find it like this is kind of Kinda, maybe we should cruel, stop right? chopping yeah, off rabbit's feet yeah just so people can have a lucky a good lecture again it's kind of weird to think about now but man jason when you and i were kids you couldn't go to any store where they weren't you know by the checkout you know i had one and it was bright orange yeah yeah me too I, and I, I carried it around i had a red one you know yeah. for a year or so like, yeah. it it's not a, like there's an industry for rabbits otherwise right like <laughs> they don't have rabbit at the grocery store up for the most part so what's what's going on with all the feet yeah it's like they're a byproduct <laughs> i know i know yeah <laughs> so they used to be everywhere you just don't see them but yeah that's lucky the rabbit's foot yeah like the lucky rabbit's foot all right lenny how about you man what was been the, the biggest recognition award anything that you ever got that you thought this is this is this one's cool mm, i don't know you know i was at acsa last week in portland 
and they had the awards ceremony. Uh, it's kind of a long story. Like it was from three years ago because like <laughs> they sent everything to Portland, but then COVID happened and they had all the bottles there. So they didn't want to ship them to the next place. So anyway, they had the convention of Portland again. And uh, we were staying there and somebody's like, where's your stuff? I was like, I don't really enter competitions. And then uh, I wandered over to one table. And I saw our bottle with a medal on it. And I was like, oh, shit. I guess I did enter a competition. That was, I remember three years ago. Wow. Um, that was kind of, I mean, that one wasn't that. Uh, I, I didn't care that much. But uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I can't really think of uh, too many recognitions. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, so part, part of that's, a, a, I would assume you, first of all, you live in a small town, so there's not as yeah. many, not as many, uh, you know, in St. Louis, there's all kinds of stuff. There's the newspapers and online stuff and all, all kinds of stuff you can win. And, and if you grow up in the town, some of those mean things to you, you, you know, so if you win the Riverfront Times Award in St. Louis, that's a big deal because that's a newspaper that's been around here forever right. that I mean, does those sort of just won We're kind of into that, but, yeah. favorite bar. Okay. Two days ago, which is, yeah. I was like, we're not a bar, but that's cool. I'll take it. Right. You'll take it. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's good. So, Jason, congratulations on the big win, the icons of whiskey, uh, the the repeat. Yeah, next year you go for the three peat. So, uh, good luck on that. That's that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Stuff. Thanks. And thank everybody at the shop over there. And uh, it's teamwork. Yep. Yeah. So they do. Teamwork cool makes a dream work. So we'll absolutely it all goes to them because they know i don't do shit around there so. <laughs> <laughs> all right well we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us lenny we'll start with you where can people find you you can find me and the rest of your hammer on social media at deer hammer on the web at deer .com, and you can come visit us in beautiful buena vista colorado all right jason uh, Bourbon's Bistro's on all the platforms. Buzzard's Roost is out there somewhere on some platforms. And uh, I have the Instagram. Um, it is Bluegrass Bourbon <laughs> Baron. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as smooth as can be. That's uh, that's the perfect name. Doesn't roll me. off the qu the tongue quite like the last one did, does no, it? Ever? No, 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 it doesn't. No, he's he's got corporate now. So all right, Speck <laughs> Sue, how about you? Jason, you'll always be the bourbon redneck to me. Oh, uh, you can you. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Becca Sue One K No C's. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website, abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blog, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Also, be sure to see us at the ABV Barrel Shop. You never know what's going on. We just had Webrink out there doing two classes for us Saturday night. So check us out. Come by and see us, St. Louis, Missouri, abvbarrelshop.com. Miss Becca, Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, we ask you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV network. Great job today, gang. For audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. See ya. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary, or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's birthday barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. 
way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with the national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, but if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.